Welcome back to Martinsville Speedway from our Budweiser aerial coverage. Can you find the leader? He's right there. Well, no, he's not. He's right. Uh, well, he's there. He's there somewhere. <laughs> he's Jeff Gordon, and he's been the leader since we waved the green flag. He started putting laps on cars. Now he just put Todd Bodine in the 54 car lap down. I'll tell you a guy that's impressing the heck out of me. There goes our leader right there, but not too terribly far behind him is a guy that's really got his car hooked up great. I don't know why many changes they made on that car, but they made the right. Look at that thing go around the curve, Larry. It's it's hugging the bottom. He's one of the few cars that's electing to run the bottom of the racetrack right now. Now there's some grip. If you can get those left side tires right against that curve, it seems like maybe they didn't grind that right close to the curve, and you can really pick up a lot of grip with those left side tires. Riding with Rusty Wallace. Look uh, at him Tom dive in there. At fifth right now. See him dive down in that turn and hug, hug that curve. Now that's what the guys could not do here last uh, last fall. They could not ride the bottom. They had to move up. But I think they've got a lot of grip down there now. Now Rusty had caught his teammate Ryan Newman, but Dick Bergeron could not pass him. Yeah, but Newman has slipped back, Mike. He started in third spot, running in sixth spot right now. The car is a little bit loose off. He just picked up the radio and said he needed some bite in. And meanwhile, Matt Borland has told him that already in this race, the brake rotors are glowing hot. Steve. Dick and Happy Hour, Kenny Wallace was the fastest car in practice, but the last few laps, Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Spencer, and Ricky Craven have all gone by the 23. Kenny Wallace telling Felipe Lopez, the crew chief, I need more forward bite. Well, Steve, what a lot of these guys need right now, and this is riding with Kenny Wallace, watch the rotor start blowing. That's when he drives off in the corner and applies the brake pedal. I mean, it's, it's like molten lava. Yeah, there's two ways to race here. You can get on the brake, on the straightaway, and then get off like a road course. Or you can, what I call, ride the car down. Ride it all the way into the middle of the turn. And if you do that, your brakes will not last. You know, we talk about qualifying being important here. Right here, we're seeing Bobby Labonte and Dale Jarrett. The, they're, these guys won the last two races here. Bobby Labonte last year, Dale Jarrett 2001. And that fact, they're battling for the 33rd position. But the real problem they have is Jeff Gordon's only four seconds behind them. They can't pass. Plus, they're racing each other side by side out of desperation. And that desperation usually leads to trouble. Look who else in this pack. Bill Elliott, Steve Park, our point leader, Matt Kenseth, and Jerry Nadu. They're all in danger of being lapped by Jeff Gordon. And you see Ward Burton in the 22 car behind him. The problem he had, he had a great qualifying run on Friday. Even the pace laps happened so fast here, we couldn't explain this. This is looking back at Ward Burton, but he had a crash yesterday in practice, had to go to a backup car. Jimmy Johnson working on Ryan Newman, who I said earlier, Rusty Wallace couldn't get by him. Finally, Newman waved Wallace and Stewart by, and now Jimmy Johnson is going to take over six. There's 43 cars out there, and about 35 of them are all running the same speed. So how are you going to pass? Honk, honk. <laughs> right. <laughs> you do that once, and then you use that chrome horn, right? That right. front bumper. Ricky Craven, he continues to move forward in that number 32 tied car that's battling Jeff Burton. That's a battle for 10. And of course, if you're back there and you're trying to get up to the front, you've got to use your stuff up. You can't say, okay, I'm saving the car. You've got to go on because you do not want to go a lap down this early in the race. Craven, right. Craven and, the, and the Burton are a good example of what we're talking about. The guy on the outside can hold the guy on the inside up forever. And just ahead of them, Jimmy Spencer. Trying to get past Joe Nemechek, not having an easy time of it. But Spencer has done well here in the Modifieds and in Winston Cup. Behind these two groups, Terry Labonte moving up in 12th position. So a lot of experience right in this pack here. Terry had a great car in the happy hour, and uh, that team just continues this year to impress me. Jim Long and he are really, they got their act together, and they've had some great runs. Look at Tony. I tell you, that's the best-looking car here right now. It's, it's, Whoa. Craven, I'm sorry, Darrell Craven slid up into Joe Nemechek, banged him around a bit, but they were able to continue. I don't see any damage on either one of the cars, but Tony's car just impresses the heck out of me. They've really got it hooked to the bottom, and that is a good thing here. Comes off the corner so nice and straight, under power. Craven, just a little bit of a dent there on the right side where he and Joe Nemechek uh, 
hit side by side. Well, Jeff Gordon is in the thick of it now, race traffic. He just caught the 22nd through the 37th place car. That whole pack is right there in front of him. There you see him putting Jeff Green in the AOL car down. He's running right now in uh, position 37. The problem is they're all running side by side, so there's no really place to go. And Green's trying to hold on to the tail end of the lead lap. That's the front valence AOL cam on Jeff Green's car. See the car, when it's under acceleration, the back's down as soon as he lets off the gas. See how the back kind of comes up? That's the kind of shock package you need here. Jeff Gordon puts Kyle Petty a lap down. Gordon has led every one of this race's 44 laps. The Virginia 500 on Fox is brought to you by Old Spice. By Chevrolet, wherever there's a winner's circle, we'll be there. By AOL Broadband, welcome to the World Wide Wow. And by Autolite Spark Plugs, it's time to change your plugs. 52 laps, and now it really gets interesting for Jeff Gordon because right in front of him are a trio of NASCAR Pass champions and the point leader. Bill Elliott, Bobby Labonte, Dale Jarrett, and Matt Kenseth right in front of the leader. And they were running side by side, and we were talking earlier, guys don't want to run side by side. The best thing those guys could do was run side by side. There was nowhere for Jeff Gordon to pass. Anywhere to go, exactly right. But Dale Jr., in the process of all this, has closed up within just a few car lengths of Jeff Gordon. Kenny Schrader, I mean, amazing. Larry, that proves that that good qualifying effort was not a fluke. The man has been right there. He's in third place and doing a whale of a job. And, and I talked to his crew chief this morning, Scott Eggleston. They struggled out of the truck, but he said every time we worked on that car, we made it better. And by qualifying, she was good, and it stayed good. Now, if you see Matt Kenseth go a lap down here, we haven't seen that often this year. In fact, he has finished. He hasn't run every lap on the lead lap, but he's finished every race this year on the lead lap. Dale Jarrett. Trying to keep from surrendering a lap to Jeff Gordon. Here's Jeannie in Dale's pit. At DW, I would think this would be your worst nightmare. Not one, but two crew chiefs high atop the box in the 88 pit. I spoke to Richard Buck this morning. Of course, he's there with Garth Finley, and they will both be in the pit. They will be making discussions, uh, having discussions as to what changes will be made. But Richard told me it will be mostly his voice on the radio talking to his driver, so there will not be any confusion. The 88 car complaining that they are real loose conversations about tire pressure adjustments for that first pit stop. Matt? Jeannie Tony Stewart still runs in fourth, but he is closing the distance on leader Jeff Gordon. Friday night, he won his first ever sprint car race with a wing. Still beaming today, he showed the team the home video of his win. One aspect of the victory, he was showing his team how he went to the bottom, the high side, trying different lanes on the dirt in Sedalia. That's what he's done here today. He's tried the high side, he's tried the bottom. Right now, he's in the bottom. He told his crew chief, Greg Zipidelli, the car has so much grip on the bottom that that's where I'm going to ride right now. The car very fast. Jeff Gordon is in a, pa a swarm of bees and trying not to get stung right here. Including Dale Earnhardt Jr. has caught him running in second. You heard Matt just talking about Tony Stewart. Now he's in the same picture as these guys, too. These cars trying to keep from going a lap down. Blaney, Kenseth, Elliott, and Park. I believe that uh, Tony will be able to slip by some of these guys on the bottom. He's just so good right through the in and through the center of the turn on the bottom that all he needs is a little opening and he can slide right in there. This could cost Gordon the lead, working lap traffic. Here they come, and this is when the driver gets real impatient. You get frustrated and you want to knock somebody out of your way. And Darrell, what'll happen, those guys who want to lap down, they'll fight that leader, but once they've given that lap up, they won't fight that second, third, fourth place car as quite as hard. Everybody, you know, the, the spotters, the crew chiefs are calling these guys saying, drive hard, drive hard, stay ahead of that 24 car. Here's Matt. Mike, back on lap 27, Jeff Gordon told crew chief Robbie Loomis, I'm starting to lose a little bit of the drive off. And then back on lap 44, as the 20 tries to make the move on the eight of Dale Earnhardt Jr. makes the pass. Gordon said the car is really getting loose. So besides lap traffic and having to try to navigate his way through, he's got a very loose race car trying to hold on to this lead. Well, that, that 20 car, I'm telling you, He's got that bottom working, and he can go right around him. He's going to go by Jeff on the outside here. It looks like his car is just so much better than everybody else's right now. A spotter's eye view of Martinsville Speedway. 
as Jeff Gordon works underneath Dave Blaney. Now for today's Singular Wireless Virtual Crew Chief question. Vote now from your Singular Wireless phone by sending text message FOX to phone number 191 or visit foxsports.com. And stay tuned for the results. Well, Darrell, I'm hearing a lot of guys complain about being loose off the corner. You pull such a low gear here, and we talked about it earlier. This racetrack, I think the temperature is as hot as it's been. These cars are really starting to slide around. 65 laps without a caution. That's when you really lose that forward bite. The rear wheel just will not hook up. Have a look at this. Close quarters. Jack Sprague, loose, loose. He's already had his Contact. back bumper knocked off once. Sprague has over in the garage area yesterday. Well, on that one, Dale Jr. would have gotten the ticket because Sprague had stopped coming into the garage. and It looked oh like well. he was going to swing right into his garage opening, but he right. couldn't make it, and he stopped suddenly, and Dale Jr. wasn't ready for it. Here's what happened yesterday during final practice. <laughs> Parking lot fender bender. He, I love my kid. I love the word anticipation. He was anticipating him going on in, but right. he didn't do it. <laughs> Jeff, Mike, one thing I've been noticing about Jack, about Jack Sprague is you know, he qualified really good here to, this past week. Uh, qualified 14th, but since the drop of the green flag, he's been steadily falling back through the pack right there. His car has got to be, you know, ill handled right now. Can't get off the corner. You saw the 31 car of Robbie Gordon get into him. Now, Robbie Gordon, on the other hand, started back in 38, and he's made his way up to 23rd. So these guys are both going in opposite directions right now. Robbie seems like his car's working well, while Jackson's going the other direction. New crew chief on Jack Sprague this week, Tony Furr. Yeah, he replaces Dennis Connors, and uh, Jack came up here and tested with riding Robbie Gordon in the singer number 31 car. But Jack Sprague came up here and tested with his old crew chief, Dennis Connors, and his new crew chief, Tony Furr. Tony Furr was actually hired for the uh, shop foreman job. This is a battle for fourth between Rusty Wallace and Jimmy Johnson. But it's since then, Tony Furr has taken over the crew chief duties. And I watched, uh, I was up on the truck with Chad Knaus yesterday, and uh, Jimmy Johnson's car looked mighty good on the long run, too. Uh, they run a lot of laps, and the car really was stable for him the whole time. Got off the corner good and straight. Got his hands full right here trying to get around Rusty. Longer we run, the better this thing turns the center. I don't understand this. Poor buddy, Tim Forbes. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> well, and I think one reason, Daryl, is, is air pressure is a big deal at this racetrack. I mean, I talked to some of the teams. They were starting their left side tires as low as seven or eight pounds. They looked like they were completely flat. The reason they start them so low is you build so much air pressure here, and I think a lot of times it takes a while for the car to come in. What that is is the air pressure coming in. Yeah, yesterday we had 8.5. Now, that's how critical it is. Not eight pounds, but eight and a half pounds of air in that left rear tire. And they said, be careful on the parade lap. Don't, don't shrink the truck around too much. You'll have knock the tire off the wheel. Toward the back of the top 10, Kevin Harvick has come from 29th to 10th, and ahead of him, 42, Jamie McMurray, Steve Burns. Hey, Mike, we've been listening to the radio communication down here. Terry Labonte said he's a little loose. Dave Blaney is too tight. Kenny Wallace needs a forward bite. Jamie McMurray is making his very first start. Donnie Wingo said, how's your car? And he said, fine, I don't want any changes. The moral of Steve's story is pretty much 75 to 80% of everybody out there, they want something, a lot of them want a caution. Might, might be a little bit of a, an advantage for someone that doesn't really know what they want, you know? So just leave it alone. Well, sometimes you can fix what isn't broke. That's right. Race leader Jeff Gordon is in heavy traffic. You'll hear that a lot today, <laughs> regardless of who the leader is. Gordon's led every one of 74 laps. He has Stewart right on his bumper and Earnhardt Jr. on his flank. 